Hey, <laughs> so this is what? November 17th? Yeah, November 17th, 2021. Um, two days after Zane's fifth birthday. Um, but can we talk for just a second about what it's like to get medical care or get anybody to take you seriously after the age of 50? Like, I'm 53 years old. And the other day, Zane, we were playing this game he calls Hair Hair Everywhere, where I take out my scrunchie and he just makes my hair just this crazy mess. Well, he found what he called a red mole on the back of my neck. It's actually flat, um, but the, the edges of it are kind of broken and it's, it's red. It's really red. So I called the doctor's office thinking that probably I should get that checked out in case it's skin cancer because I've had a lot of sun exposure on the back of my neck and my face and everything. And I'm about at the age where things are going to start popping out, right? Well, I called and talked to the triage nurse uh, wanting to make an appointment with my doctor. And she said, oh, you're coming in sometime next month anyway. And she looked up the date. It's about four or five weeks out, I guess. Yeah, about five weeks. Yeah, you're coming in, in you know, next month. Um, so why don't we just wait until then? It... it you know, these things just start popping up the older we get, you know, as we age, we just start getting red marks and freckles and stuff. It's no big deal. I wouldn't worry about it. Um, and this is not the first time I have had something just sort of poo-pooed <laughs> that I brought to the attention of my doctor or the staff. And I find it really annoying and demeaning and kind of demoralizing that sometimes I have trouble taking care of myself. Yes, I don't always follow the instructions for my medicines, right? But I try my best. <laughs> I am trying. And when I have a concern, I think they should listen to me, don't you? Have you ever had this kind of experience where you're like, hey, I'm concerned about this thing. It might be cancer. And they just go, oh, well, you know, that happens as we get older. Don't worry about it. Like, I'm irritated. And another thing I wanted to tell you guys about was a few weeks back, um, I went in for a checkup with the um, cardiovascular, cardiopulmonary people, I should say. And <clears throat> the office called me and said, hey, it's time to come in for your six-month checkup. Because last time I was in, the doctor had put me on meto metropolol to um, slow down my rapid heartbeat and it's been working great. So I go in and a different doctor comes in that I hadn't seen before and he says, so why are you here? And I said, well, I'm here for my checkup. And he goes, well, what can I do for you? I said, well, the office called and said I should come in. So I suppose we should talk about my medication. And he goes, oh, well, what are you taking? Like he didn't even look at my file on the computer when he came in. So I told him, and he says, oh, well, are you having any problems? And I said, N no. And he goes, well, then what do you need? Why are you here? And we went around about this several times, and then he says to me, you know what you actually need? I said, what? And he goes, vitamin M. I said, vitamin M? What do you mean? And he goes, money. All you need is money. What you need to do is get a job so you can have money and get off of disability and you need to get a boyfriend. Then you can travel and you can be happy and you can forget about all this disability and physical pain and depression that you have because it's all in your mind. All you have to do is focus on something else. So get some money and a boyfriend. And he said that several times. I kind of laughed it off at the time because I mean, ugh. I didn't, I didn't actually know what to say in the moment. It was crazy. So I got out to the car and I started thinking, you know, that was way, way inappropriate. I mean, really inappropriate. So I called the office and I got his name because I wasn't sure what it was. And I wrote it down and I've been thinking on it for, I guess this is the third week now, for two or three weeks. And I think I'm going to write a letter to the hospital and let them know that this is the way he spoke to me and he listened to my heart I mean he put the thing on tap 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 that was the only thing he did by way of examination 
and it is not worth the $45 copay that I had to pay to go see him. So I want my money back or a credit <laughs> and I don't ever want to see that doctor again. And I don't think he should be working there if this is how he treats everyone or even just women. It's not okay. It's not okay at all. So have you guys ever had mistreatment by medical providers or felt like you your concerns weren't listened to or validated? I had one other doctor back in the mid 2000s, um, a female doctor, and she told me, well, first she refused to refill my pain medication that I'd been getting from a different doctor, uh, but I'd lost the insurance for that one, so I had to go to this one. Anyway, she said, I'm not going to refill your pain medication. And I asked her why, and she said, well, uh, if you were an 80-year-old woman, I would believe that you have the level of pain that you say you have. But because you're only in your 40s, um, there's no possible way you can have that much pain. And I'm not going to give you any pain medication. I'm just not. And of course, I started crying because when my pain gets bad enough, I can't even get out of bed. I can't do anything. <laughs> And it's a very scary place to be to not be able to take care of yourself or, you know, if you get up to, I don't know, clean the kitchen, you get partway through it and then that's all you can do for that day and maybe the next two days because the pain is so flared up and the muscle cramps are so bad I can't do anything else. So pain medication is very important. Um, also, I was getting a muscle relaxant at that time, which she also refused to refill. And I haven't been able to get since because other doctors, um, I don't know exactly what their reasoning is, but they don't wanna give it to me for fibromyalgia pain, even though a lot of it is muscle cramping. So sometimes I augment my pain medication with my doll because my doll has a little bit of a muscle relaxant in it, or at least it did last time I checked. Um, but sometimes I do that and I have BioFreeze and um, I have a TENS unit and I have a heating pad and you know, there are things I can do to help mitigate some of the pain and the muscle cramping. But anyway, this doctor who said she didn't believe me about my pain and she said it straight to my face. Um, that was, <laughs> that was really, really a mean thing to say. And it really upset me. I started crying and, um, she left the room. I can see you're upset. I'm going to leave you alone for a little while. So her medical assistant comes back in and dismisses me. And I was, I was still upset. So I went upstairs to talk to the ombudsman and let them know what had happened. And they just kind of went, ah, poo-poo, you know, whatever. She's she's new or something like that. Um, and nothing ever came of it with her. There was no disciplinary action. And I wasn't allowed to choose a different doctor in the network. Because it wasn't the right time of year to switch. And none of the other doctors were accepting new patients at that time. So I was stuck with her for probably two years, maybe three before I moved. And again, I got into a different network and had to get a different doctor. But, um, oh, the other thing with her, the next time I came in to see her, they put me in a different room and um, different exam room. And if you know anything about going to the doctors very often, they usually, the doctors usually use the same room or couple of rooms. Well, this one was totally different. I mean, several doors down. And um, when I when I got into that room and settled in to wait, I was looking around and up in the corner, um, one of the tiles in the ceiling was ajar and there was a camera poking out from there. They were video recording me or at the very least watching me. Um, apparently, this doctor told the administrator that I scared her when I cried. <laughs> I frightened her. So she wanted video recording or video footage in case I freaked out or something. So I don't know. Doctors are just people, but I've sure had my share of crappy ones. 
I've had some really good ones too. Um, but anyway, these are the things that are on my mind. Right now I'm really ticked off that um, I can't get in to see a doctor about my skin concerns until four or five weeks from now. And then it's going to be the Christmas and New Year holidays. And then I'm going to have to get referred to dermatology. So we'll see how long it takes for anybody to have any kind of concern about this red freckly thing on the back of my neck. Um, I got Zane, my grandson, to take a picture of it for me so I could see what it looked like. So I'll try to tack it on at the end of this video in case any of you care to see it. I mean, it's not impressive or anything. It doesn't look wicked. It's just basically a red freckle, but I'm still concerned. I think it should be looked at. So I guess the, the other point that I wanted to make about the skin cancer, I know it's not related to internal tumors or anything, but my body has a history of growing tumors and cysts and I've had endometriosis and just I've had a lot of problems um, so I feel like they should pay a little bit more attention to me just because my body likes to grow things that shouldn't be in there <laughs> so I'll be right with you kitty so I guess with that I'll say goodbye for now thanks for watching and let me know down in the comments what kind of medical experiences, just a minute, Dexy, what kind of medical experiences you've had that were questionable or really made you angry? All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye.